All right, so we just learned in this module how to deal with the fact that neural networks take a long time to train. And in this lesson, in this video specifically, we are going to learn how to implement those techniques in Python and Keras. So the first thing that we talked about is normalizing the data. We talked about the fact that normalizing the data helps the network train or learn faster. Um, we actually done that before. So if you remember previously when we were doing our um, example and we are our exercise, uh, after reading the data, we divided all the examples by 255. And we did that to normalize them, to bring them all from zero to one. So that is one example of normalizing your data. Um, but another way to do that is using batch normalization. Then you wouldn't have to do this manual part. Uh, what you can do is to just have a batch normalization layer right before your hidden layers start. Then all your inputs will be normalized and hopefully your model will be faster than it was before. The next thing that we can do is to change the optimizer that we're using. As we talked about, some optimizers are faster than the other ones and depending on your problem, what you should choose might vary. Um, if you want to see all the options that you have for optimizers, you can go and follow the documentation. Uh, but we already talked about some of the options that we have um, and implementing them are very simple. One way is to just specify the optimizer in your compile function after you set up your architecture of the network. You call a compile function if you remember and we specify the loss, we specify the metrics that we want to see while this uh, network is training. And also you can specify the optimizer. The default is to use gradient descent with momentum actually. So, so far I've all only been telling you that it was gradient descent, but actually this one is gradient descent with momentum uh, included already because that is objectively a better way, a faster way of training the network. So no one uses only gradient descent anymore. But if you want to change it, you can use ADEM, NADEM, and all the other ones um, in your uh, compile function. Another way to specify it is having it here separately from the um, compile function. So here, for example, we are using gradient descent with momentum, but we are using all the default values for all the parameters that we can set for the gradient descent. So this is called the string identifier. So we're using the string identifier. What else we can do instead is to uh, define this optimizer using some of the other things that we want to specify and then putting it in a variable and then passing that variable as the optimizer uh, argument to the compile function. What can we specify? Well, we can specify the learning rate, for example. We can specify a certain momentum value because there's a, a default momentum value, but you might want to change it, of course. And also, when it comes to Nestero uh, gradient descent, for example, or Nestero optimization, you can specify it for gradient descent to include Nestero or not. Uh, there is no separate Nestero optimization in Keras, but if you want your gradient descent to um, implement the Nestero trick that we've seen in the lesson, then you can set it here, for example. Um, and another way is to not having it on a separate line, but again, you can just pass the uh, this whole Keras optimizer uh, and whichever one that you like to the optimizer directly in the uh, compile method or compile function. Then you'll be able to also specify uh, arguments or specific parameters for your optimizer. Uh, but, but this is basically uh, a choice. You can do it either separately or inside the compile function directly. So the next thing we have learned was learning rate scheduling. So let's see how we can implement that. So basically when it comes to learning rate scheduling, you can either implement your own functions and pass it to your model, or you can just use the uh, ones that are built in in Keras. So to, to be able to see the options, you can go to this link that I've noted here to see all the options that you have in terms of scheduling algorithms. Um, but let's go over a bunch and see how they would be used in Keras or how they would be implemented in a project. Um, so just like we did right before, if you want to pass an optimizer, and if you want to do power scheduling, so you want to bind the learning rate to be a function of the epochs, then you can just basically add a DK 
parameter or DK value to your optimizer after giving it a uh, initial learning rate value, then your learning rate is going to be decayed or lowered as the epochs go on. So this is one way of doing it with power scheduling. Another one that we learned was exponential scheduling. So for that one, you can either write your own function like this one and then make it a callback function. So um, here, as you can see, we've done this before, actually, if you remember, uh, you can create a callback function for the learning rate scheduling and then you put the um, function that you created in, inside it and to be able to uh, apply this to your training what you need to do is while you are fitting the data fitting the data to your model you can just add it as a callback function to the fit function of the model so that's one way of doing it the another way of doing it is to use the built-in function and in that one you're just going to set all the settings that you need to uh, specify for the exponential decay and then you are going to pass whatever you, you uh, created. So this could be exponential decay, this could be piecewise, uh, constant scheduling, whatever, to uh, as the learning rate to the um, optimizer that you're creating. And then you can pass the optimizer to the compile method. Very similar with the piecewise constant scheduling, you can either create your own uh, function create a callback function from it and then pass it directly to the fit uh, method. Or you can use the built-in version, the built-in function that they have for piecewise constant scheduling after specifying the boundaries and the values that you want to try. Um, and then putting it or uh, passing it directly to the model compile function as the learning rate. And the last one is the performance scheduling one. Basically for that one, it's again, very simple. You create a callback function. You don't have to create a separate function for that one. It's already built in. You just call the reduce learning rates on plateau a function. And like we did before, um, when we were doing early stopping, you specify what you need to monitor. You specify a patience for how long you're waiting. And you specify the minimum learning rate that uh, the learning rate value needs to take. And uh, yeah, and then you pass that in the callback functions to your uh, model while it's training. So next thing that we can do to make the model faster is to prune it. Um, I will not go into the details of the whole pruning uh, here because that will take hours and hours, but I want to show you how you can get started if you wanted to do pruning for your model. So the library that we're using is called TensorFlow Model Optimization, as I mentioned also in the class. Um, or in the lesson, the specific lesson that we where we talked about the pruning the network. Uh, so basically, what they suggest or what they advise is to first create a model and train it fully, and then do pruning on top of it. So that's exactly what we do here. We train a model, and then on top of that, we create a pruning model from scratch using the TensorFlow model optimization libraries prune low magnitude function. So we pass the model to that one and then we compile a whole new model on top of it. But this model, it has the purpose to not train, but to prune, to find the uh, weights that are not adding so much to the um, quality of the network or the performance of the network and prune them out. And then after that, we uh, fit this pruning model for however many epochs that you want. Uh, and then your model will uh, basically be pruned. So that, that's basically all you need to do. You just need to create a, a pruning model, pass your model to that, the model that you've already trained to that uh, model, and then uh, do a new fitting using the training input and output that you already used. Um, one important thing to do here is to check the test accuracy before and after you train your model because pruning sometimes can dramatically decrease the accuracy that you have if it's not done correctly. So you always want to make sure that you're checking the test accuracy or whatever metric that you're calculating or evaluating your model with, uh, just to see that there is no dramatic change. So here you can see that we even have an increase in terms of accuracy after we pruned and that uh, happens sometimes, so that's a good sign. But this was just a quick 
model that I created for I, I run it only for a couple of epochs and everything so just so you know that is something that you need to keep an eye out for uh, but that's it using the tensorflow model optimization you can quickly prune, prune your networks uh, if you want more detail I would suggest you go and look into the into the documents of the TensorFlow model optimization library. Very likely you're not going to need this at first, uh, but just so you know it exists and just so you know where to start if you want to prune a network. The last thing is mini batches. We've seen already how to set mini batches in the hyperparameter tuning uh, coding section. Uh, but just to remind you, basically, while you're fitting your data to your model, you just call the batch size and you specify the batch size there. Uh, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment under this video and I'll see you in the next module. Thank you.